Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a variation on the blue flash damsel. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise is a Hanak H970 barbless hook. This one's at size 10 and it's on a heavy wire in black nickel. The more discerning viewers amongst you will note there's a brass bead on the front of the hook and that's from Fritz and Flash. It's 3.2 millimetres and it's olive. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's the classic wax thread at 6 aught, and as you can see it's fluorescent green. Now the first thing I want to do, and not everyone does this, is I want to get a bump in behind the bead. Uh, it really it doesn't sit well with me when the bead's moving up and down the shank of the hook. I want it to stay up the front there where it's eventually going to lie. So I'm going to use my rat's tail just to help me keep my thread wraps kind of touching. Uh, they're not entirely touching, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. And I'm going to bring that up just to pass the point of the hook. I'll take that away. And what I'm going to do next is just concentrate on building a little bump at the rear of the hook. Now, some people um, will take a few turns. If you watch the uh, the fly tying tips video, the live video a few weeks back, uh, Rick Pasek um, showed you that he likes to bring his thread wraps underneath. I like to get a bump on my longer marabou tailed lures. I like to have a bump at the back there. It just stops tail filling. Now the tail itself. Uh, I'm using some comp candy. This is no longer available, I might add. Um, you need to get your marabou elsewhere. Uh, it's called Olivesque. I've already got a feather that I've been working with here. It's a lovely shade of olive. And this will work with any shade of olive, really. Um, you don't need to get picky with it. So I'm going to take from the tip of my thumb to my knuckle. And that's how, how much of the marabou I want. And I've just ripped it off the stem. Now, I don't want this white bit here, so I'm going to just over my waste basket, trim away the white bit. Then I'll catch that in at the front of the fly and bring it all the way up. Now, I'm holding this onto the top of the shank of the hook and I want to come my last thread wrap is if I can get my pointy gadget, is just in front of the bump there. And that'll keep keep the tail for fouling. Now, it's a little bit long for my needs, so I'm going to come in, just pinch away the marabou tips there. Now, the blue flash that I'm going to use is Kingfisher Blue, and I did have a little bit already taken off. Now, to attach this, I'm going to bring my thread up the body of the fly a little bit. I'm going to lay on the tinsel on my side first, like so, a couple of turns. Then I can bring my tinsel over the body, and I'm going to catch it in on your side. Now, it looks rather long at the minute, and there's a good reason for that. So what I want to do is to have them exactly the same length. So at this point, I can bring them back, try and get the marabou out of the way, and then come in with my scissors, and that will keep them nice and uniform. Now they might be standing or sitting um, at an awkward angle at the minute, but as soon as you lay them back down, it will sit right for you. Okie dokie. So far, so good. Now, for the rib of this fly, I'm going to use something quite unusual. So, usually you would use a wire or often a thread. But what I've got here is a flat braid from Simplify. And I thought this would make a, a nice ribbing. And uh, it certainly seems to work quite well just adds a little something to the fly. So I'm going to take my length of flat braid. And sorry, I didn't mention the uh, the colour. This one's um, electric blue. 
and once I've got that into position like so I'm going to add my body dubbing and that's where is it here it is again it's this uh, multi-pack that I got some while back and what I'm using is the shamrock green for the body I'll just take a clump of that out the dispenser and then catch it on now I don't want um, a big thick body so to speak I want it to be fairly thin so I'm just going to give myself enough dubbing now what I do is I keep a little bit in my hand so if I've not got enough on my thread I'm able to come in and just add a little more without having to to go back to my dubbing dispenser if you like and just another wee bit I always find it's much easier to add than trying to strip in materials off your hook and I'm fairly happy with that so that done I can then grab my braid I'm going to come over I want about two or three wraps of this good distance uh, between the wraps and then once I've brought it to the front of the fly I can catch that in like so a couple of times in front I'm able to come in and remove that with the tippet so that's looking not too bad I think I might have snipped the tail a little bit shy I'd like that maybe half a half a centimetre longer but never mind the it's done now, it's done now. You can't glue it back on. So, before I start working my hackles at the front, what I want to do is rough out all this nice scruffy dub in here. And I'm going to just come in with my Velcro brush and really pull out them fibres. Get it looking really scruffy. Uh, the damsel such a such an effective fly on the small still waters uh, anywhere really, but I find it worked particularly well in the south of England. Um, ah, that's looking pretty good now. When it's wet, what you get is a sort of halo effect on the body with all them fibres, and that's looking pretty good. So the first hackle I'm going to tie in is uh, some partridge now this has been dyed olive uh, it's a vineyard product you can you know you can dye your own feathers if you're off a of mind and you've got that skill set unfortunately i don't so what i've got here is a dyed feather and i want to strip away all the waste at the bottom just bear with me folks so that i've just got this little bit of feather left now usually uh, you would come in and catch the tip but on this occasion I'm going to add a little bit more wax to my thread and I want to catch it in at the stem end so bring that over like so bend it out and then I'm going to catch the tip of the feather in. Now up until, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, um, I used to tie all my feathers in like this at the stem. And it's only just recently that I've started to um, catch them at the tip. And even then, just occasionally for certain, certain patterns, I still like to go back to doing it this way. And it's not a particularly good feather actually, it's not um it's not speckled like I want uh, I wanted it to be, but um it's not a great bag of feathers to be perfectly honest. There seems to be an awful lot of waste in it. I'm just coming with my toothbrush to open up the fibres. It's looking not too bad. And then the secondary hackle, again, it's just a an ordinary, it's a hen cape, it's been dyed olive and I've already picked out 
a feather from that. Now, I thought I trimmed the tag, but obviously I needed to put my glasses back on. There's far too much there. And I'm just going to come off that again. It's not sitting just how I want it. I'm going to lay it diagonally across my thread wraps there. That's better. And then catch that in. Just get... Just trying to bring them fibres out the way. Right. That seems to be okay now. So I'll catch the tip of the feather with my hackle pliers and it's still not it's really wanting to misbehave this I think I've maybe got the measure of it this time as I bring it up round I'm going to just try and encourage the fibres back only looking for two turns and then once I've got that in place, I can come in with my thread, like so. And I know it looks uh, a bit bananas at the minute, but don't worry. We're going to set that straight any second. So now I've got that trapped in, I want to get all my hackle back out the way. Now, you'll have seen on the original what we did is we created a little collar with a hot fluorescent thread that just adds a little bit more to the pattern in my humble opinion so just being careful i don't want to add a big massive collar but i do want it to be quite prominent now it serves two purposes it's a hot spot for the fish and it also pushes your hackle back out the way now keeping tension on the thread, I'm just going to grab my waist end and remove the waist of the hackle. Then with my hackle, my hackle pliers, yeah that would be interesting, whip finished with the hackle pliers. Yeah, I'm not that clever. No, I've got my whip finish tool here. And three turns should do the job. Hold that into place. And then you can come in with your snips. Now, I'm just going to ease all the hackling back. I've dampened down the thumb and forefinger in my left hand. Just want them hackles to sit a wee bit flusher to the hook. So just play about with it until you're, you're happy it's sitting right. And then I can come in with my UV resin when I can find it. Right in front of me, typical. And then just make sure you get right around your thread. And you don't want to get any of the resin onto the feather. It sucks it up like a straw. So try and stay away from your hackle. Then come in with your brush. Now you could, you could fish this in a team, I suppose, on the point. But uh, I always find a 10 to 12 foot leader as thin tip it as you dare and you're going to get lots of movement and you should get plenty of sport out of this fly.